you think it's time? Oh yeah. Well, let's go then. Two, one. So let's start with the Moto G4. And let's be clear here, ever since Motorola came out with the Moto G, they've been making insane budget smartphones, and the G4 is no exception. So for just under $200, you can actually get yourself a smartphone with Android 6.0, a large, spacious 5.5-inch 1080p screen, which actually looks really good, by the way, in pretty much all lighting conditions, and a Snapdragon 617. So for those of you who aren't really into your processors, I mean, who really is these days? The Snapdragon 617 is close to top of the line. It actually has almost the same compute performance as the best processors on the market. And it's very, very fluid. I mean, performance is great. The phone absolutely aces gaming and pretty much everything else you'd want to do on your Android device. It's also got a 16 megapixel camera, which doesn't quite compete with the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S7, the HTC 10, but it's less far off than you probably expected. The battery life with over 3000 mAh of juice was also really rather impressive. Now the phone doesn't really break new ground in any way whatsoever, but if you actually consider everything that it does, its value proposition is unprecedented. Next up we've got the Xiaomi Redmi Pro. Now Xiaomi makes a lot of different tech products and they're all known to be very high quality at an affordable price, but the Xiaomi Redmi Pro goes to a whole new level and it has an not an octa-core, but a deca-core processor. So this phone actually has 10 cores, meaning it's going to be very, very powerful. Now this phone also has a bunch of different additions ranging from 32 gigabytes of storage all the way up to 128 gigabytes. And you can also choose between three and four gigs of RAM, which is more than enough RAM to handle as many apps as you want. As for some other specs, this phone also has expandable storage, which can make you add up to 256 gigabytes more. And the phone has a 5.5 inch 1080p screen. So it's a huge phone, but once again, it's a great value. Now for the camera, we have a 13 megapixel back facing camera and a 5 megapixel secondary front facing camera so as you can see Xiaomi did not miss out with any aspects when creating this phone and you can still get it at a very budget price. Now one of my favorite parts about this phone is the fact that it has a 4500 milliamp battery which is much larger than the iPhone battery or other batteries. For comparison this is my portable battery right here and it is 5000 milliamps and this is basically inside of the Xiaomi Pro which is actually like it's crazy and you know, for the price you're paying for, this is definitely one of the best phones you can buy. So then we have the Vodafone Smart Prime 7. Now this was released by the company Vodafone at pretty much the bottom of the market. It costs 75 pounds, or for you US folks, that's just under $100. And for that, you also get Android 6.0. You get a 720p 5 inch screen and a Snapdragon 210. Now of course, the Snapdragon processes, the way they work, you have the 2 series at the bottom, then the 4, then the 6, and then the 8. So you'd expect the 2, right down there, to be pretty weak. But for some reason, the performance actually holds up really nicely. Everything you do on the device is pretty smooth, and it can even handle probably 90% of the games on the market. On paper, the battery life is not going to raise any eyebrows. It seems pretty standard. We've got a capacity of 2 540 mAh. But when you actually use it, it is seriously, seriously efficient. I actually did a full review of the smartphone about a month ago, and with light usage each day, I could squeeze a week's use out of one charge. That's really impressive. And to top it all off, you've got some great 4G coverage and micro SD card support. Now the next phone on the list is the Willy or Wiley Fox Swift phone. There's a good chance you haven't heard of it before, but it's a very, very, you know, competitively priced phone that has a lot of great functions. It does have 16 gigabytes of memory and two gigabytes of RAM, but it also has dual SIM capabilities, meaning you can run two SIM cards in it at once, and you can use it if you're definitely going to be traveling a lot, and you won't have to worry about you know switching SIM cards. The phone is also running Cyanogen, which is another plus for some people. Now, even though the phone only has 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, you can expand the memory with a micro SD card, and the phone is running a Snapdragon 4108916 processor, which is a quad-core processor, and the phone also has a five-inch screen. Now, a huge plus about the screen is that it is made out of Gorilla Glass 3, and you wouldn't expect to see such premium materials on a phone so affordable. Now the Swift also has a 13 megapixel back facing camera and a 5 megapixel front facing camera and everything else about the phone is pretty average. It has a 720p display as well as a 2500 milliamp battery but this phone is very versatile in the sense that it can do every single task you want 
at a great price and this phone also has a lot of function for what you're paying for it and it can handle really anything you want it to do whether it be you know traveling and using the phone in different countries or taking amazing photos or running a lot of apps this phone does everything you want it to do so with the last smartphone on this list we're going to be jumping forward a little bit the lenovo k6 note is expected to either release towards the end of this year or early next year anytime up till about march 2017. Now Lenovo's K-Note series has been ridiculously successful. They've boasted really large, vibrant and high resolution screens, amazing battery life and rather powerful components. And the K6-Note is going to be no exception. Now even the K5-Note, which is only released in certain regions right now, already has a 1080p display, a Helio P10 processor and a great battery. And the so far leaked specs for the K6-Note are looking pretty juicy. We've got Android 6.0, a 1080p display, which to be honest, I'm perfectly happy with. I think 2K just squeezes battery life unnecessarily, and this is not really intended to be a super ultra flagship device. There should be two variants, one with three and one with four gigabytes of RAM. And as for the processor, we don't actually know, but the only thing we do know is that it's an undisclosed octa-core chip. So either it's the Helio P10, the Helio X10, or MediaTek is going to slip out a new one between now and then. Who knows? But I'll tell you what really brings the offer to life. The K6Note is rumoured to not only have a fingerprint sensor, a removable back cover, microSD card support, dual SIM and 4G, but we've also got a stunning 4000 mAh battery. So that could quite easily keep you going for two days of heavy usage. So that's about it for this video, guys. Let me know down below in the comments if you want to see more. And be sure to check out Mr. Who's the Boss as well. But that's about it. If you guys did like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo, and I'm signing out. I, I can't reach. Let me just get up. There we go.